Okay. Um, so this video is about the present active indicative and the imperfect active indicative of the Greek verb. Um, and both of these uh, uh, tenses, their tenses, okay, present and imperfect, correspond to present tense and past tense, are forms with the imperfective aspect, okay? So we're talking in both cases about an ongoing process, right? Not a completed one and not one in which we're not specifying the completedness of the process, okay? So um, the present active indicative of regular verbs, in regular verbs, there are actually only two kinds of verbs in Greek. Um, there are regular verbs and irregular verbs. Um, so this is a huge number of verbs are like this in Greek, okay? These, this is the living mm -hmm. category of verbs in Greek. Belize's nodding her head, she knows. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're learning this, these things, you're learning gazillions of verbs, okay? So it's a f an efficient way to learn. So the present active indicative in regular verbs is the base form, okay? That is, the way it's structured, it's the thing on which everything is built up. So it's like a the Christmas tree with nothing on it, and then you start putting all kinds of ornaments, okay? So this is your starting point. Um, in the case of this, here are the forms. We've, Melissa's written them down. Uh, for, the, for the first person, we've got luo, that means I. This verb means, has a weird kind of meaning. It's a short verb and it's easier to write, but it's the same, it has the same form as the one that the book uses, which is by Dewo. So luo means I am releasing, okay? It's, we have this verbal root in things like analysis, that's lucis, which means loosening something uh, into its constituent parts, right? Anyhow, so this means I am releasing. Um, the second person singular means you, a singular person, okay? In English, remember that you can be either singular or plural, but in Greek there's a difference. You, a singular person, are, are releasing. And the third person singular means he, she, or it is releasing. In other words, there's a, a subject implicit in these verb forms. And you could put a period after luo or lues or lue, and it would be a sentence. He or she or it is, you or, or I are releasing, is a sentence, okay? Mm -hmm. um, because the Greek verb has the subject, the pronominal subject, the I, the you, the he, she, or it, embedded in it, okay? It doesn't have a... Uh, a specific subject like the king, okay? But if you want to say the king is releasing, you use the third person form because he's a he's a third person, okay? Or the queen, she's a third person, okay? Um, the the fact that the pronoun subject is implicit in it um, means that you can leave the subject out. But if you have have, have an explicit subject. In a Greek sentence, it's going to be third person singular or plural, right? Mm -hmm. All right, um, so that's the forms of the singular. You can see from just looking at these forms that you have a base element, lu, L-U, and then you have the endings, o, a, a, amen, ete, use, okay? Um, notice that, well, we'll show, come back to this, but you've got omega, epsilon, iota, epsilon, iota, omicron, epsilon, and omicron, upsilon and then a consonant, or no consonant, right? You've got uh, a certain kind of vowel alternation, which maybe you suspect from what we've been seeing before, is related to the alternation between E and O in the Indo-European languages. Remember we talked about get and got, and stuff like that, which is a, a feature, a der derivational feature of missing an end there, alternation, <laughs> not alterations, okay. <laughs> alternation this is a feature of Indo-European languages. We'll see it more clearly in a second. Um, but then you have the plural. We are releasing, you are releasing, and they are releasing. I'm translating them in this kind of awkward way. Conventionally, people translate them, I release, you release, he, she, or it releases, which doesn't elicit the aspectual feature of the verb. Okay. Um, in English, I think it, it, it means that process is going on when you say I release it, it means I'm doing it now okay mm -hmm. so you can validly translate a Greek present with I release instead of I am releasing but I want you to understand the concept behind them okay um, and the plural is we are releasing you are releasing and they are releasing those are the forms you've got a base and endings lu 
plus endings. The accent something we're learning about separately. Okay, and now we're going to switch to the imperfect, which is the past tense of the imperfective aspect. Um, if you look at these forms, you can see, and I'm just going to read them, Eluan, Elois, Eloe, Eluamen, Eluate, Eluan. Each one is preceded by a, a, a prefix, E, okay? Um, and the prefix E in Greek, um, which you can add to verbs that begin with a consonant, okay, is the marker of past tense. So all the way through the Greek verb, not just in the imperfect um, um, which is the past tense of the imperfective aspect, but in all Greek verbs that have a past tense, that's the way you mark it. So in the aorist, which is a past tense, in the pluperfect, which is another past tense, you use the e eh, um, when the verb begins with a consonant to mark the pastness. Okay, so that's the function of the e eh in front of the lu, and then you have endings, and the endings are elu on, elu s, elu e, eh, and Eluamen, eluete, elu on again. The first person singular and the third person plural are the same. Originally, there was a T in the third person plural, eluant, but final consonants disappeared in Greek, okay? So erase the T. <laughs> okay? Bye bye. It's not there. All right, that's not this. the reason I wanted to erase it is because we forgot to talk about this in the present. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the third person singular, Eloe, it, it has a new after it, okay, which you use when the next word begins with a vowel. So it's like the difference between a uh, and an in English, right? Mm -hmm. That's a new movable. A book, an elephant, right? When the word begin, after begins with a vowel, you add the an. The same is true of Eloe. Um, so here you can see clearly in the imperfect that you have an alternation pattern between O and E in these forms. And this is something that's consistent across the Greek verb as well. We can make a little chart maybe in the bottom right-hand corner. Mm -hmm. If you do one, two, three, singular and plural, what you see here is in the singular O, E, E, or Omicron, Epsilon, Epsilon, and then O, E, O in the plural. That's the alternation all the way through the Greek verb. This is little vowel, the O or the E is called the thematic vowel. We'll come back to it. So what marks verbs, in fact, as regular verbs is that they have in many of their forms, not all, this thematic vowel. So we're going to pay attention to it and notice it as a feature of the verb. That's it. Good all luck. Right. <laughs> yeah.